Right before we jump into this video, if you would like to take better pictures in only 11 days, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and welcome to the user's guide for this Canon EOS RP mirrorless camera. Now, if you purchased one, congratulations on purchasing it. I'm gonna help you set it up and figure out some of the basic stuff, as well as move through a little bit more of the advanced settings for how to set up the menu system. Now, if you haven't purchased one yet and you wanna see me using this, well, there's a link down below that's gonna take you to a hands-on preview where I got to use this camera, as well as give you some raw files to download and play with. So the first thing we're gonna do is start with the outside of the camera. First things first, let's start on the bottom right here because we need to figure figure out where the battery goes, and this is where the battery goes. So to get to the battery, just flick this switch, your battery's right here, it pops in, it pops out, it can only go in one way, if it doesn't go in the other way, well, don't force it because then it could get stuck and you don't want that to happen. Now keep in mind that with the battery like this, you're going to get anywhere between 300 and 400 shots. And if you're doing a lot more video, you're probably not gonna get a ton of time shooting video. And one thing to keep in mind is that when, you sh when it says full, yeah, it's full, but then when it drops to half, just know that it's gonna go much quicker in using the battery that's left in this battery uh, than when it was full to get to that half point. So the recommendation, always have multiple batteries in your bag just in case one goes bad or you run out of juice and then your camera basically becomes a paperweight. So popping it back in, you just move this tab, this gray tab, you slide it down, put it in and it's good to go. Now your memory card in this camera is right here. This is an SD card. Right now I have a 128 gigabyte pro grade card. That's gonna give you quite a bit, quite a lot of photos on a card just like this. My recommendation is get at least 64 gigabytes at this time, but definitely have multiple cards and remember, back them up after your photo shoots. Back up your cards, put them in multiple locations, not just one place, because if something goes wrong with those, uh, the, the computer or the hard drive, those images are gone. So try to back them up in multiple places as well as up in the cloud somewhere. That's a good recommendation when you're starting out. Now, if you're somebody who got the grip with this camera when you purchased it, it's just a little grip, you have to actually take off this door right here in order to get the grip on. So to take off the door, there's a switch right here. You push the switch one way, oh, it goes this way, and then goes like that. So you just move the switch out of the way, boom, you take it off, and now you have this door. My recommendation, put the door back in the box that the camera came in, that's in the closet somewhere, so that you know where it's at when you no longer use that grip. So to put it back on, I'm just gonna pull the spring back with this switch right here, and this may be a little difficult for you guys to see because my hand's gonna block it, but you just, Go like that, you slide it in. Yeah, I say go like that, as I said, my hand's gonna block it. But you have to get it back into the groove of it, and then, boom, you can shut the door, and there you go. That's where the battery goes, that's how you take the door off, and that is where the SD card is. Continuing on with the bottom of the camera, this is your tripod socket. This is where you're gonna screw in the plate that comes with a tripod, or if you have a gorilla pod or a monopod, this is where you go ahead and screw that in right here. Now let's move to the top of the camera, because now that we have the battery in the camera, we can show you where the on and off switch is. Canon went ahead and made a dedicated switch that does one thing. It goes from off to on and doesn't do very much else other than that. Sometimes you could get away with a smaller switch, but they went with this. So anyway, you can turn it on, boom, turn it off, boom. Next to that right here, this is where your flash will go. This is your hot shoe. So this is where a flash goes on top or if you wanna put a microphone, if you're gonna be shooting video, you can put the microphone right there. Now, continuing to the right of that, you have your mode dial. Currently, it's set to green mode. Green mode is full auto, where the camera's basically gonna do everything for you based off of the situation you're shooting in. It's gonna try and guess and give you the best settings possible. It's not a bad place to start, but over time, you will get out of the auto mode as you progress as a photographer. But some of the other things on here, you've got scene mode, so that's that, where you can go through different scenes. They kinda got rid of all of the stuff that you used to be on the dial, like the running man or the portrait mode. That's all done digitally, so 
you go to scene mode and then on the back of the camera, you can select the different modes right there digitally on the back. This is where you go if you wanna go and shoot your video. This is C3, C2, and C1. They're custom settings. So if there's, say, you're shooting outside, more often you have an outside setting and then when you go inside, say you want that to be C2, it's set already for a higher ISO or a different shutter speed. You can set these however you want and set them in the menu. It's nice that they have that. They even have the bulb setting right here. That's what the B stands for. So what this means is if you're on a tripod and you wanna say shoot lightning or fireworks. It may come in handy for fireworks where you want the shutter to stay open for five or six seconds or as long as your finger is pressed on the shutter, you press your finger down and when you release it is when the shutter now trips and closes. So it's gonna stay open in bulb mode as long as your finger is pressing down the shutter button. Now, being that I said shutter button, this is your shutter button. If you press it halfway down, that's how you activate autofocus and a full press is going to activate shooting pictures. So just remember that it, it takes a little bit to get used to, but you'll figure out the pressure that's needed. Uh, back to this mode dial right here, you've got manual, which is M, AV is aperture priority, TV puts on your favorite channels of like QVC. It really doesn't, I just made that up. Anyway, TV is shutter priority, meaning you set the shutter speed in the camera and the camera's gonna do everything else in terms of your ISO and your aperture. Aperture priority, which I skipped over real quick, does the same thing. You set your aperture, say f5.6, the camera's gonna set the ISO and shutter speed to correspond with the proper exposure for the aperture that you have selected. P stands for program, and then a new mode is called FV, which stands for flexible priority. Not sure how they got the V out of that, but flexible priority is in essence a full on auto mode that gives you some flexibility. So if you're no good at yoga or Pilates, go into the FV mode and you'll be more flexible. Moving on to the right, this is a command dial, which is going to change either your aperture or shutter speed, depending on how you have your camera set. So if you go to the right, it's gonna move something one way. If you go to the left, it's gonna move it the other way. The lock button that's right here, the lock switch, if you go ahead and switch that, that's going to lock this dial. Now it's gonna still spin, it's not physically locking it. Not only does it lock this dial, but it can also lock other settings as well. So if you put it on lock and you try to turn this dial to change the shutter speed or aperture and that's where it's set to, it's not gonna change it at all. I generally don't use this very often, so I leave it on unlock. Right here is the other command dial. It's actually nice that a basic camera like this has both a command dial for shutter speed as well as aperture because a lot of the other cameras on the market in this range don't actually give you that functionality. So same thing, you can rotate it left, you can rotate it right, it's gonna change either the aperture or the shutter speed, whichever way you have it set. Right here is a multi-function button. This is a very powerful button that you can map out in the custom setting menu where you can say, oh, if I hit this, it's gonna allow me to change the ISO. Or if I hit this, it's gonna go into some other function or feature. It's a nice and powerful button depending on how you program it inside of the camera. Right here, this red record button is exactly that. When you're in video mode, you hit the record button and you go beep. You don't have to actually say beep, but you press it and it's going to start recording video. Moving on to the back of the camera, this is your electronic viewfinder. When the camera is off, it's gonna be black, so you're not gonna see through it because it's digital and it's off. Back in the day, we used things called an OVF, an optical viewfinder. There is a video linked down below to help you understand the differences between electronic viewfinders and optical viewfinders. In this case, we've got an electronic viewfinder. It's a very good viewfinder. Just keep in mind, you will notice that when you look through the middle of it, when you actually have it on looking at something, it's gonna be nice and sharp. And you may notice that if you move your eye off to the left or the right, it may get a little more blurry around the edges. There's nothing wrong with your camera. That's just how this is designed. Now, right next to that is a diopter. If you wear glasses and you shoot, you're gonna go ahead and move the diopter one way or the other until it looks sharp when you're looking through the viewfinder. So that is another nice feature. Right here is your touch screen, your LCD touch screen that flips out and rotates all the way like this, all the way back like that. 
So you could see it if you're looking here and you want to watch what's happening. If you're vlogging, you have that right there. Or you can put it back on the back of the camera just like this. It also protects your screen if you're traveling and you don't want anything to hit it. Well, you can put the back out like this, but just know if you wanna review your images other than in the electronic viewfinder, you're kinda of gonna go ahead and turn it like this. A good recommendation and a rule of thumb is if you twist it and it stops, yeah, don't twist it any further or you're gonna break the screen just like this. Uh, wait, I'm, I'm not gonna break the screen. I'll wait till the end of the video to do that. So stick around to see if I break the screen which I'm not actually gonna do, but you may think I will. So I'm gonna stick around, cause you never know. Now this right here I didn't talk about is a proximity sensor. Let's see, if I put my finger here, oh look at that, the screen goes off. So it would be like my forehead going up there. Oh, the screen's off. Oh, proximity sensor. And basically you get it, it's proximity. It turns it off and what it does is it activates the electronic viewfinder and that's what you start to see is right there through the electronic viewfinder. Right here is your menu button. So if you wanna go ahead and change settings in the camera, you hit the menu button and boom, it shows up on the back of the screen or if your eye is against the viewfinder and the proximity sensor has been triggered, you can see the menu system inside the camera. It's the same thing. You'll get the same thing on both of these screens. Moving on to the right hand side, you've got the info button, which is a way that you can rotate through different info, whether it's the image that you're looking for, or if you're actually shooting, it can change the different display modes. The play button is where you play back your images. And this is the trash can, where when you press it, it summons Oscar the Grouch. Arr, I'm grouchy. It's just the trash can to delete your images. Moving up a little bit on the camera, this is your D-pad, or as I like to call it, the up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, select, start, BA, select, start, you know. Contra 30 men, that's how you can move focusing points. You have a set button in here. It's kind of like your enter button when you're in the menu. You can also touch the screen to change the menu settings, which we'll show you later. It also has the Q, which is pretty powerful because I'm gonna show you right now. You hit the Q button and all of these settings come up on the back of the camera, which we hopefully can see from here because yeah, there's a lot of functions you can do right on the back of the screen, which is great. So turn the camera back off. Right here is your AF on button. This is another button that you could map, or if you wanna do back button focusing, which I personally don't do, you could map this button out right here, but it's a great button to have. You've got the star button, which by default is going to lock in your exposure when you press that. Down here is the checkerboard when you're reviewing images. It's the one way that you could zoom in and zoom out, because you would use the star for zooming in, I believe, and you would use the checkerboard for zooming out, or you could always do the pinch and zoom thing, being that that's what you can do on the screen right here. Now rotating to this side of the camera, you have a bunch of different inputs. Right here behind this door number one, you have a headphone jack, a microphone jack. Up here behind door number two, you have a remote jack in case you wanna have a remote. And behind door number three, you've got a USB as well as a, see, ooh, look at that, USB-C as well as an HDMI port. If you wanna go ahead and connect that to a TV to show your images to somebody else and you wanna think that you're pretty cool, you can go ahead and do that. Have you signed up for the Fronos Photo email list yet? Well, if you haven't, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Now, let's jump back to the video. And now it's time to show you how to take the lens off as well as put it on. So here we go, I'm turning around this way. Right here is a button. You press this button, you hold onto the lens tightly because you don't want to drop it, and you rotate it in this position towards me. I'm rotating the lens and I take it off. It's a good recommendation that you turn the camera off before you take the lens on or off. It's just so that you don't get excess dust in the camera because look at this. This image sensor is exposed to the elements. You don't wanna get rain in here. You don't wanna to touch this. You don't wanna breathe on it. You don't wanna blow on it. You don't wanna do basically anything to this other than cover it up as quick as possible, which is line up this red dot. So you have a red dot there and you have a red dot at, at the top of the camera. You go ahead and you line them up. They go there and then turn it the other way until you hear a click. I hear the click, it is now on. Now some of you when you purchase this camera may have been given for free, which was included, or purchased separately, the EF adapter. Now this 
is the EF lens adapter. As you can see, my finger goes right through the hole because there are no optics in this. What this thing allows you to do is attach this to the RP and then you can attach older EF Canon EF lenses to use on this camera. It's actually pretty ingenious and it's a way that you could save some money on glass by some of the older lenses and attach them to this camera, which I'm gonna show you how to do right now. So we take the lens off, carefully, off. I'm gonna place this lens to the left of me, standing it up for the time being, carefully. I'm going to take which side? Well, there's only one side you can take, and that's this side. So I'm gonna look for the red dot, which is right there, and the red dot right here. Line them up, turn it till you hear a click. Now that's attached. Now I can take my EF lens, which is this one right here, taking the back cap off, taking the red dot to the red dot, lining them up, boom. Now I've attached an EF lens to this camera and it's gonna work really well. So that is how you attach this lens to this adapter to this body. All right, to save time in this video, I just switched back to this and took the adapter off. So that is the outside of the camera, showing you how to put things on, take things off, and show you what each button does. So now let's dive into the menu system. Now, before I jump into the menu system, I need to let you know that we are recording into what's called an Atomos. This is so that we can record all of my movements in the menu system so that you can see them to learn from. Now, because I'm doing that, it deactivates the touch screen so I can no longer go ahead and use the touch screen. So basically, when you're going through a menu system, if you just want to change something, you can touch it on the touch screen. Let me cut in here real quick and let you know of one thing. I am showing you the menu settings based off of being in manual. Now, if you're looking at your camera right now and you're like, I don't see the same settings as you, Jared, well, that's because you're probably in auto or FV or in one of those modes. Just go ahead and turn it to manual and then you will see all the same settings as I am seeing. First things first, you hit the menu button and it brings you into this setting right here. This is the camera tab. So the first thing we see under one is image quality. It's default set to large. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the set button on the back of the camera, and there's a couple of options you see here. You can see that JPEG is set to large and RAW is set to a hash mark, meaning there is no RAW currently being shot. I personally shoot RAW, as you can see across my shirt. RAW is an uncompressed format that gets more data and it gives you more control over your files in post-production. So there's a larger file, but you can control your editing. You can go back to, uh, I can go back to my raw files from 2003 and start over editing them because I have all of that raw data there. A JPEG is a baked file, meaning the camera makes a decision, does get, gets rid of some of the information it doesn't think you need, and then compresses it. Kind of like if you made a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy, a JPEG, the original, is gonna look pretty good because the cameras do a good job with it. It's a smaller file, but as soon as you edit it and then resave it and then edit it and resave it again, you're losing quality each time you do that. When you're first starting out, I recommend that you shoot possibly in RAW plus JPEG. You put the RAW files away until later on because you have to edit each and every one of those RAW files and some people just don't wanna do that. If you don't wanna do that, it's up to you, then don't shoot RAW if you feel like you don't wanna do any editing at all and you want your camera to do all of the work for you. But if you do wanna take control of your files, you can then go ahead and use this top dial just like it shows you on the right of the screen, turn it to the right and I can shoot in RAW or CRAW is a smaller RAW file. I personally figure I'm gonna shoot in the highest RAW file format possible because you can always dumb down a file. You can't dumb it up once it's been dumbed down. Now, under the JPEG, you can see that there's large, and then there's large with like stair steps. That just means it's a slightly less quality file. Then you've got medium in the best quality for medium, and then medium in slightly less, small, small one, and small two. So when you decide where you want it to be, if it's highlighted in red, you're good to go. And the set button, you hit to hit okay. And so there we go. 
uh, cropping and aspect ratio, I leave this on full. I do not want to crop to 1.6 or 1 to 1, which is Instagram for square, or 4.3 or 16 by 9. Now keep in mind, if you do shoot in raw format and you go to these other settings, it will show you a preview on the back of the screen of the one-to-one, -one, but the RAW file will still have all of the RAW information. So I leave it on full because you bought a full-frame camera, you should use the whole full-frame camera and take advantage of that. Next up is image review. I'm gonna show you this. So I'm gonna take a picture. So here we go. I'm gonna take a picture of that. And look what happens. The image pops up after I take the picture, which I find to be really distracting. Now it stays up there for two seconds before it goes away because that's what it's set to, or you could press the button halfway down and it would get you back into the live view. Personally, I turn this off. I want it off. I do not want to be distracted by the picture I just took popping up in front of my face when I should be focusing on capturing the next image. Release shutter without card is currently on on, uh, enabled. I disable this because I do not want to release the camera if a card is not in the camera. Because it's like when I was shooting film back in the day and I took like 36 pictures and realized I didn't put film in the camera and was like, oh snap. It would have been great if the camera was like, I'm not shooting pictures because there's no film in me, dummy. And then I would have been like, thanks camera for calling me dummy. But seriously, turn that off. Moving on to menu number two underneath the camera, we've got lens aberration correction. Whatever this is set to is what I leave it on. I don't even mess with this too much. So I'm gonna go back to hit menu to go back. We've got external speed light control. Skip past this because we don't have a speed light connected to this. We've got exposure compensation. I leave this set where it is. ISO speed settings. Let's go and take a look in here. Now currently ISO is set to auto ISO. Now auto ISO isn't a bad place to be if you're just starting out and you want the camera to make all the decisions for you. It's going to go ahead and do that. Now the ISO is going to change probably from picture to picture depending on the situation that you're in. And if you signed up for my 11 days to better photography mini course that I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, you're going to get a crash course in ISO which is going to help you out. Personally, I turn this off, so I go in here and I set it to, well, 100 is fine. The lower the ISO, the brighter the situation you're gonna be in. When it's darker, you need a higher ISO. But as the ISO goes up, here's your crash course basically, as the ISO goes up, you're gonna see more noise and grain introduced into your final images. So don't be scared if you see some noise or digital grain in your images. That's normal. You can also change this on the outside of the camera as well. You have your other ISO speed range as well as auto range. This is where you're gonna go to set parameters for the lowest ISO you want and the highest or what the auto ISO is going to do. So if you don't want it to go higher than 12,800, you would have it set to 12,800. Minimum shutter speed, we'll leave that on auto. We don't need to worry about that for the most part. Now back to the menu system. You've got ISO speed, the same thing except for the video side of it. So we don't have to go there because it, it works exactly the same way. Auto lighting optimizer, I leave off. Highlight tone priority is another thing that I leave off. When you shoot raw, most of these things aren't necessary and they're things that you could change after the fact. But a lot of the times the things that are set by default, they're default for a reason and it's pretty good to follow it unless I say there's something that I would change in here personally. Uh, metering timer, eight seconds is perfectly fine. Exposure simulation is an interesting one. Let me explain this real quick. So when you're looking through your electronic viewfinder, as you change your shutter speed or lower your aperture or change your ISO, you're seeing your exact exposure in front of your eyes. So you're seeing it change. It's gonna be either too dark or too bright or right on. Now, if that's because it's enabled. If we were to disable this, the screen would just stay one brightness and it would give you like the perfect looking exposure the entire time. So you could have the worst exposure ever by the settings. You could take a picture and it could show up all black, but you're like, but the viewfinder looked fine. Just check to make sure that this wasn't set to disabled. Moving on to number four, we've got white balance. Auto white balance is personally what I shoot in because I shoot raw and I can tweak the white balance after the fact. Custom white balance is what you would go into if you wanted to customize your white balance depending on a situation that you're in. White balance shift, I leave this where it's at. Color space, sRGB, and picture style 
style is currently set to auto. You have a bunch of different options from standard to portrait to landscape to fine details, neutral, faithful, monochrome, user defaults. You've got three different options for that. This is where you would go if you're shooting JPEG because you would select the scene that you're shooting. If you're doing a portrait, you would change it for this. Auto does a very good job, but this is where RAW is different. Raw does not, it, raw is not affected by the changes that you do here. The raw file is gonna still give you the raw data no matter what, and you still have to edit after the fact. For example, if I was to shoot photos in monochrome in raw, well, I could get the black and white image on the, in the camera because the preview is gonna show that to me. But after the fact, the raw file, if I wanted to have it in color, I could just hit the color button, and it's gonna bring back that data. Whereas if you shot a JPEG, well, the JPEG is gonna always be monochrome and you'll never get back the colored data. Now, the same thing also applies for picture style when you're shooting video. If you shoot video in monochrome, you're not getting it back after the fact. So just keep that in mind. Uh, auto is not a bad place to be. Moving on to number five, we've got long exposure noise reduction is off. Uh, I like to turn all of these off. The next one is high ISO speed noise reduction. I like to disable this. I don't want the camera doing that. What, what, what noise reduction does is it smooths out the image when you're shooting at higher ISOs, which tends to make it look less sharp. And I personally rather have more, I rather have the grain structure there than to have it smoothed out and not looking good. Dust off, delete data, I don't ever touch this. Uh, touch shutter is currently disabled. Now, if you enable this, this means when you touch the back of the screen, it's going to take a picture as soon as it autofocuses. I personally turn that off and leave it on disabled because I don't want to take pictures when I'm just touching the screen to move my focus or do something else. Multiple exposure is set to disabled. If you want to take more than one exposure on a frame, you would go into enabled. That's something you may want to play with at some point if you want to get creative. HDR mode is definitely disabled for me. That is off. Focus bracketing is also disabled as well. Moving on to number six, interval timer. This is a nice option to have in there. Uh, Bulb is currently disabled in its current form. Anti-flicker shooting is also disabled right now. If you find yourself shooting in lighting situations where the lights flicker a lot, like a gymnasium, it's actually a good idea to turn this on to enabled. It says, if enabled is set, the shutter release time lag becomes longer. Continuous shooting speed may become slower. So keep that in mind if you're gonna set it to that. But what it's doing is it's taking a picture on the er, not the flick. You get what I'm saying? It basically waits until the flicker's not happening, which means you don't get weird discolorations in your images, and that's why you get a shutter lag. It's actually pretty smart that it does that. Moving on to number seven, we've got AF operations. So you've got one-shot AF as well as servo. One-shot means I'm gonna press the button halfway down. You hear that beep? As long as I have my finger halfway pressed down on the shutter button, the focus is not going to shift. So let me go back into the menu here and show you what servo is. Servo is continuous autofocus. So I'm gonna hold my finger halfway down on the button, it focused. I'm gonna hold, keep hoping, you see it's focusing every time? Boom, it's focusing, it's focusing. Yep, that's servo. Servo is continuous focus. So you're gonna use that when you're shooting action or people running. You're gonna use single shot when you're shooting inanimate objects or also when you're doing portraits. So that's, you can change this after the fact when we go into the back of the screen. Actually, while you're shooting, you could really press a button and you can do that. AF method, you have all of these different options. If you want an expanded AF area, you've got expanded AF area around. It's just a larger auto-focusing area for the camera to choose from. Generally speaking, you can use, I like to use one point AF or expanded AF depending on the subjects that I'm shooting. Eye detection AF is currently disabled. Continuous AF is disabled. I, I hate this feature. So if you enable this, the, the camera's gonna continuously focus nonstop even if your finger isn't pressed on the button halfway. I just think it's highly distracting. I turn it off. One of the greatest features ever though is touch and drag AF settings. Touch and drag means if you put your finger on the back of the screen while your eye is up to the viewfinder, you can move your finger over here, your thumb, and as you move it, the focusing points move and it's much quicker and easier to do. I love this. So I go ahead and I put this on enabled. Uh, positioning is relative. 
Absolute means that no matter where you, wh wherever you put your finger the first time is where the focusing point's gonna show up. So I personally leave it on relative, even though it's not even my brother. Active touch area, I put this on the right side because that is, I'm, I'm left eyed, so my left eye is up against the viewfinder and then I can just use this area of the screen to move the focusing points. This is a tremendous feature that I absolutely love, so I hit okay there. Back into the menu, moving on to number eight. We've got lens electronic manual focus, I leave this on off. AF assist beam, uh, I turn this off because I don't want the light to ever show up. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna turn it off. I don't want the beam ever on. Go off, get out of here. And then manual focus peaking settings currently, I have that, it, it's grayed out so I can't select it. Moving into movie record size. This is where you're gonna set the size of the video that you're gonna record. This one is 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames a second. The one above it is at 60 frames. Then below it, you've got light IPB. That's a smaller file, but remember, once you dumb it down, you can't dumb it back up. As I move over here, we've got even smaller HD at uh, 1280 by 720, and then 1280 at 720 at 60 frames a second. You can see that max record times show 29 minutes and 59 seconds. That's what you're gonna get in a continuous recording. It will go for that amount of time before it stops, and then you have to restart it again. Next up, we've got sound recording. So currently it's set to auto. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, Leave it on auto. If you do have an idea of what you're doing, then you could switch it into manual. If you are you know, in a situation where you know it's gonna be really loud the whole time, you can set it down to like one so that it, it, it's gonna pick up, it's gonna lower the levels so it's not gonna peak. Auto does a pretty good job uh, for, for the most part, so it's not a bad place to be, but if you wanna take more control, you can go ahead and do that. Movie Digital IS, I turn this off. I leave this on disabled. Uh, movie Servo AF is currently enabled, that's your dual pixel AF. This does a tremendous job with autofocus. Uh, where you, you can touch the screen, it's gonna move the focus points where you want them to be, or gonna change the autofocus. So dual pixel AF is awesome. And finally, we've got auto slow shutter. I leave this set to the default that it's set to because it does a very good job with that. Are you new to shooting raw files and you're not sure where to start when you're editing them in Adobe Lightroom? Well, we created FroPack 1, which are 14 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out at fronosphoto.com slash presets, where you can play with them. You can see the before, the after. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are 40% off, so go ahead and take advantage of that. And now, let's jump back into the video. That was a long section, so we're gonna move right on to the playback menu. Protect images, rotate, erase all, print. I don't touch any of this stuff, and I skip right to the second one. Raw image processing, if you shot raw in the camera and you want to process the images, you could go ahead and have that happen right inside of the camera. Again, that's not something that I do inside of the camera. Three, cropping, resize. I don't do any editing inside of the camera. How many times do I need to say that? Well, that's like two. Uh, and four, you've got playback information display. This is actually useful. So this will show you all the different options for playback in uh, when, you're, when you're reviewing your images. Some of these you don't need to have on. So if you're like, well, I don't want this one on, I can go ahead and uncheck it, make sure you hit the OK button, and then boom, it's gonna save it so that when we go back in, number four is no longer checked. So let me actually show you how this works. I'm gonna hit the playback button on the back of the camera, and then I'm gonna head in, go ahead and hit info, and it's rotating through all of the different info displays. So you can see how it was shot, 1 80th of a second at F4 at ISO 8000. You can see the histogram in the top right-hand side. You can see the battery. You can see all of this information. Uh, so let's get back into the menu. Highlight alert dis is currently disabled. AF point display, that's if you wanna see what which AF point you used when you play back your images. That's actually pretty cool, so you could turn this one on, so we enable that. Playback grid, I personally leave that off. Uh, view from last scene is enabled and magnification approximately two, two times. That means when you zoom in on the image, it's gonna jump in there 2X and I'm assuming you could go ahead and change that to a lot more. So you could go up to uh, actual 10X magnification, which is probably a little too far. 2X works out pretty well. So moving down to the wrench menu over to the right, this is the yellow menu. Select folder, I leave this alone. 
file numbering is continuous. That means when you finish shooting a picture, uh, taking a card out of the camera, it doesn't reset back to zero. So it's going to continuously be one through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, up to 9,999 images. And then the image, then the camera resets back to one after 9,999. So don't be afraid or scared when you see that happen. Next up is auto rotate. Currently it's on on the camera as well as the computer. Now I personally turn this to just on on the computer because when I shoot a vertical image, what happens is the camera goes ahead and just shows it to me with black bars on the side and it's much smaller. I like to be able to turn the camera sideways or vertically to be able to see the image fully on the screen, but no, it's gonna rotate it in the computer so that it's, in, it's, it's the right orientation there. Uh, format memory card is extremely important. When you get a new memory card, you format it in the camera. So basically it's telling the camera that this card belongs here and they're gonna talk better to each other. Now keep in mind, if you do go in and you format, your pictures before you back them up or save them, you're not gonna get them back if you do a format. So I'm not gonna do that now because I don't wanna delete all the images that I already took. So I'm gonna hit menu and I'm not hitting okay. Mode guide is currently enabled. This is for the auto settings. Uh, I personally would disable this, but if you're gonna stay in those uh, basic settings, then you could leave that on there. And then feature guide is currently enabled. This is for when you're in those auto settings as well. Moving on to number two under the wrench, we've got eco mode is currently off. You have power saving. Uh, the display we currently have set to not go off for 30 minutes. Now the reason we have that set is because, well, we don't want to have to screw up our recording, so we leave it there. But you could totally change that. Display off, I would say, what are the options we have? We have 30 seconds. 15 seconds, all right, so you get 15 seconds up to 30 minutes. This is probably something you want in the 30 second or 15 second range. It depends on how often you look at the back of the camera or, or you, you want the display to go off. It also will save you power. Auto power off is currently disabled. We have it disabled for us, but you can set, change this setting yourself. I would set it to say like five minutes without using it, have it shut off. And the viewfinder off, uh, if you're not using the viewfinder, have it deactivate on its own after a certain amount of time as well. Moving on to number three, uh, video in the United States, you have an NTSC. You can change that to PAL if that's where you want to be. Touch control is currently set to standard. I leave that. Beep is enabled, so when you are in single shot and you press your finger halfway down on the button, you are going to hear a beep, an audible beep that lets you know that you are in focus. Now, you don't want to do that if you are shooting in an area that is silent. Uh, and you can't make noise. There you're gonna wanna switch into silent mode in this camera, which I did not mention yet, but in order to get into silent mode, you actually have to go into the scene mode and select sh silent shooting there, and it's full auto. You do not have control of your manual settings there, but if you do need to shoot silent, you can do it. You just have to go into scene mode. Battery info, I'm not even sure what it's gonna tell me. It's gonna tell me how much is remaining. It's not gonna tell you exactly how much is remaining, and like I said earlier, it's most likely when it gets to half, it's most likely going to die fairly quick after that. Back in the menu, we've got sensor cleaning. Currently not going to do that, but every time you turn the camera off, it likes to clean the sensor for you. Uh, if you see some dust on the sensor, you don't want to touch it. You don't want to blow on it. You want to try and use the sensor cleaning option in the camera, which is going to shake the sensor and hopefully shake it off, shake it off for you. Uh, HDMI resolution, 1080p is where we have that as well. Next up, we've got shooting info display, which is a massive, massive section. This is what shows up on the screen or in the viewfinder when you are shooting. Screen info settings, all of this. You see the different options? You can set this, change this, do whatever you want. This is to taste, this is personal. So go in there and see what works. Do you want all of this on the screen or do you want none of it on the screen? I like to have some stuff on the screen, uh, but not all of this, that's just way too much information for me. It's actually, this is what I shoot with most of the time is in one. But if I wanna see my histogram, then I have to go into three. But you have these options. You can change this up all on your own. One more thing I need to mention is that if you hit info, you can go ahead and turn certain things off and on, like the histogram in the mode that you wanna have it on in. This is powerful. Not every camera lets you customize like this. This is really awesome that you can go ahead and make those changes. Uh, viewfinder info toggle settings, again, more settings, 
and more settings that you can change when you hit the info button. So go ahead and play around with those. VF vertical display, on, I leave it on. Grid display, I personally leave this off. If you wanna get your rule of thirds or checkerboard up on the screen, cause that helps you with getting your lines straight or putting subjects in the composition where you want them, then go ahead and turn that on as well. Histogram display is currently set to brightness. Uh, that means you have the other option of RGB. The more useful one is the brightness for histogram. So I leave that and display it as large because I'm pretty blind. So I like to have it nice and large. And finally, we've got focus distance display. This is if you're in manual focus mode. So it's gonna show how the, uh, the, the manual focus is gonna show up in your camera because it can actually show you the distance and everything right there. I leave this on default to where it's currently set. Now that was just one section of number four. I don't know why they didn't just put in a whole section on its own of this, but they didn't. Viewfinder performance. Now it gives you an option for power saving or smooth, and if you're like me, you wanna be on smooth, cause you're super, you're like, you're like, I'm so smooth, I'm so smooth. Anyway, I leave it on smooth because it's gonna give you the best image or the best live viewfinder, whereas power savings is dumbing it down, and I do not want to dumb that down. VF display format, there's two different options. I, I don't even know why this is an option. I wanna see the full viewfinder filled with an image, not black bars like this, but maybe, maybe it's if you wear glasses, this is a better option. I don't wear glasses. I mean, I wear glasses. I don't wear them when I shoot. So I leave display one on personally. Display setting. So currently it's set to auto, but if you want to say lock the option where it, it, it leaves the display on all the time, even if your head goes up to the viewfinder and that's where the proximity sensor is, well, you can go ahead and switch this into manual. But most of the time we go ahead and leave it in auto. Shutter, fu uh, shutter button function for movies. Um, that's if you want to activate that. I leave this set exactly where it is because I don't want to mess with that. Uh, and then help text size. Help, help me, I want it to be standard or small if you need the help text, which I honestly don't even know where the help text is for most of this, uh, but you can change the size right here. Moving on to wrench number five, wireless communication settings. This is where you would set your Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi functions, Bluetooth, uh, and the nickname of the camera. If you use Canon Connect app, this is what you would use. It's gonna walk you through it. When you download that to your phone or to your tablet, you go ahead and it tells you exactly what to do right here inside of this. It's pretty powerful, so it's nice that this camera has all of these options. Next is GPS device settings. If you have a GPS device connected to the camera, this is where you would go and control those settings. Even more here under number six, you've got multi-function lock that I showed you earlier. You can show that if all these other buttons are locked in there, it's gonna lock everything like touch control. So say we turn off these check marks and we just leave the check mark on uh, the finger. So when we put it on lock, the touch screen will no longer be active. So you can no longer touch it. It will still be on, but it's turned off. And then you would go ahead and just turn the lock off and you would be good to go again. Moving down, you've got custom shooting modes where I showed you the C1, C2, and C3. This is where you would go to lock those settings in. Clear all camera settings. We're not doing that because we just set them all. Copyright information. This is where you can type in information, your author's name and copyright details. So I would put in Jared Poland Frono's photo. And then under copyright details, I do Jared Poland Frono's photo again. You can put a phone number in there if you really want. If, and that's embedded into your files, especially your raw files. Manuals, software, and URL. Uh, hold your phone up to this and it's gonna launch the manual uh, and, and other things to help you out but this video should be helping you out, but this is actually pretty cool that they now build this in there so that if you ever need it, it's right there. Uh, certification logo is just something that you have to do in this country. It just shows you all of this information, which is again, inf I can't read that because it's in different language, but that's just me. Maybe you could read it. And then you've got your different firmware that when this camera gets updated or upgraded the firmware, you would come into this area and it tells you what firmware you're on, but also how to go ahead and update that firmware.
Are you new to shooting photos and you'd like to take better pictures or would you like to shoot video as well? Well, I have four different Fronos Photo educational guides that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com guides. There's a Fronos Photo guide to getting out of auto, the Fronos Photo guide to flash photography, the Fronos Photo guide to shooting video, and the Fronos Photo guide to editing video. So to get free previews of each one of those guides, head on over to fronosphoto.com guides. Moving on to the custom function menu. So what I did is I already went through and made some changes to the custom functions that I would personally change for using this camera when I set it up because if I didn't, well, it would take a long time to explain all of this. So when we go into each one of these menus, just understand that wherever you see blue down here on the bottom of the screen, that shows where we made a change. So everything else up until we get to number five, has stayed the same and we made a change right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the set button back here and you see that info help now shows up, check it out. If I hit info, it now brings up some information which explains what the settings are that you might be changing to. So in this case, we changed it from three shots to five shots for number of bracketing shots. So if you're somebody who wants to do some HDR shooting, say you're, you're a realtor and you're shooting inside of a house, but you wanna be able to get the exposure inside as well as the exposure outside, you would then do an exposure bracket of five shots, meaning it will go click, 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 and click, cause that's five, and each time it's changing the exposure, which means when you compress them or put them together in Adobe Lightroom, you're gonna have more latitude to work with the file because because, well, now you're gonna have an HDR shot. So we set it to five. All right, to move on, I hit the OK set button again, and I gotta go back to menu. Now down here into custom function two, which is autofocus, you can see right here in the first section, we made a change where we made it so that it's gonna lock on quicker. Again, if you hit the set button, then help info, you can read what the different options are and you can determine whether or not you wanna set them the way that we are currently setting them. But in this case, we went to minus one for lock on and then we go back. And then for number two, we maxed out the acceleration for tracking so that it can help track the subjects a little faster. And then everything else we left exactly as it is. Moving down, we've got the operation and others, which is custom function number three. We went ahead in number four, and we go ahead and hit okay under, yes, this is a lot of information under number four. Now, what we changed in here is AF on. You can see that the button is highlighted. Now, what this one does is it allows you with one press of a button to go from single shot to servo shot, which is a tremendous feature that I don't even have on a high-end Nikon that I use myself. This is a great feature because if you're shooting a subject who's running around, they're running, they're running, you wanna be in servo. But if they stop and they sit down and they're just sitting there and, they, and you want to lock on to the eye for a portrait, you can then hit this button and now you're in single shot and you can lock in on the eye. It's just so much quicker than having to change anything else. So we went ahead and changed that. The one other thing that we changed is we made these two buttons back here mappable that when you do set IAF to on, it will activate when pressing either one of these two buttons. Another thing that we changed is the D-pad. Now, if you wanna go ahead and have your focusing points move via the D-pad, you have to go in and activate that. So let me show you what happens when you turn it off. AF point is, I'm gonna select that. Look at what happened with the other options of the D-pad. They all switched to something else. Now, when I go ahead and do direct AF point selection, which is what I personally like to do, I select that, and then it goes ahead and it maps out the other buttons for up, down, left, and right. Now, there's no BA or select start, so you will not be getting 30 extra men. Now, the nice thing about this camera is that you can differentiate different settings when you're in photo mode versus video mode. That's why you see the video mode over here. So one of the things that we went ahead and changed is the AF on button, which pauses movie servo AF. So if you're in dual pixel AF, which is a great autofocus mode, and you want to switch to manual focus, you go ahead and hit the button that we set it here, which is the AF on button, which is gonna pause it to allow you to do manual focus. So that's really cool. Then we move down to the magnifying glass that when you hit the star, it's gonna go ahead and magnify whatever is in your 
viewfinder. So if you're shooting manual, it's gonna help you make sure that you are getting it nice and in focus. And finally, this is an interesting one. So this is maximize screen brightness with the AF point button, which is the, yeah, this one right here. I had to see which one it was because sometimes there's so many different options that I'm not even sure which button is which. But if you are outside in super bright light and you need to maximize the brightness of the viewfinder, well, with it mapped out to this, you hit this button and bam, you've maxed out the brightness. Now moving into the next menu option, we've got number six. This is interesting, so this is for custom dials. So I'm gonna hit the set button to go in here. Now inside here, this is where you can change these command dials, this back one or this front one. Now the way that I like to shoot with a Nikon camera is that my shutter speed is here in the back and on the front, it gives me aperture control. Well, Canon on the other hand does shutter speed on the front and it does aperture in the back. So if you wanna reverse those or switch those, you would go in here and do that. Now the one thing we did change is if you have an RF lens which has the mode dial out here on the end of it, a new command ring, you can change that to set it to a bunch of different things. You could set it to change your aperture, change your shutter speed. In this case, well you could also turn it off by going to off and we went ahead and used ISO. So if we want to change the ISO quickly without having to hit any buttons, I would just go to ISO and then turn this ring and that is going to change ISO for me. So moving back through the menu system, we then change something under number nine and this number nine, number nine, number nine. What a great song by the Beatles, right? How's that become a great song? I don't know, it was just people were probably dropping LSD and they were high when they listened to it. I wasn't born yet. Now under audio compression, we set it to disabled because you want to get the best audio possible that you can tweak later on if that is what you would like to do. So we put that on to disabled. Now go ahead and move back. We've got clear all custom function settings, which we're not gonna do. And we're not gonna clear custom customized settings either. Now the final menu here at the top is the green star, and this is where you get a star for making it this far. So leave a comment that says, I made it this far, give me a star, Jared. And maybe I'll give you a star, you know, like when we were back in the school. Like, so in school, there was the chart where you'd have your name in like first grade, and then they give you a star as you did something good. Then you'd get to mine, and it would be negative stars, because they're like, you were annoying, and you punched a kid. I never punched a kid. Or you, you were not paying attention, so I got negative stars in school, but that's okay. I'm here to teach you guys that it's okay to get negative stars. So let me just tell you that with this menu setting, this used to be a great thing to have because you didn't have the Q button, which you have in this camera, which basically allows you to quickly get to everything that you used to put into my menu. But you can now add different things to my menu tab. Like, let's see, add my menu tab. Uh, yeah, okay, I wanna add to my menu tab. That's what I wanna do. So you can select different items, select item to register. Of course that's what I wanna do. You can put cropping, image review, release shutter without card. As you can see, it makes sense. If there's something you wanna add like, uh, how, I don't wanna do that, touch shutter. I go ahead and hit set and okay. Register this, I do wanna register it and then I go back and back again and there it is touch shutter. So you can keep adding things and you also get two menus that you could set up right here. But like I said, you, you could put format card, you could put battery information, not that this camera gives you the exact battery information like the other cameras, but it's still nice to put things that you want to quickly get to without having to dig through all of those different menu settings. And finally, we've reached the end of going through that entire menu. Now with that being said, there's still another menu that's hidden. For all of you guys who want to shoot video, so now I'm going to turn the dial until I get to the video mode right here. I'm going to hit menu on the back of the camera and I'm going to take it back to tab one. Now you can see there's a whole different menu for video. Now I'm not going to go through this one in full complete detail, just know that this is here. But in order to fully unlock the power of it, I need to go into manual. So let me go ahead and go into manual, hit OK go back to the menu, and now it's brought up some different options like movie record size. This is where you can go to get 4K movie recording. Now keep in mind when you go into 4K with this camera, it's going to crop your image 
at 1.74 times. So any lens that you have on there, you multiply it by 1.74, it's basically giving you more bang for your buck. It, it, it's punching in. Now I wouldn't say that it's more bang for your buck, but it's punching in with the 1.74X crop factor. Also, it's deactivating or turning off the ability to use dual pixel AF. So the autofocus in 4K will not be as good as if you shot in 1080. So the recommendation is mostly shoot things in the 1080 so that you could have dual pixel AF. So moving out of this menu, there's one other thing or a couple of things that we change under menu number six. You've got movie tracking sensitivity. We like to go ahead and have this on responsive because you want it to be super responsive when you're tracking a subject uh, shooting video. So we go ahead and hit set for that. And then there's movie servo AF speed. We go ahead and put this up all the way to fast and hit set and okay. Now this works for us for our style of shooting, which is running and gunning, meaning Steven's chasing me around when we're shooting video, so he needs that fast autofocus speed. Now that may not work for you in all situations, so my recommendation is you test it out and see what works best for you. But that is really what we needed to show you for the video menu. Now we're gonna jump into the next section. So now what I wanna show you is what you're most likely gonna see when you look through your viewfinder or use the back of your screen. Now, it may not be the exact same thing that you see because we're recording to this Atomos, so it shows up slightly different, but all the information is the same. Now, I also have the lens cap on so that you can see the menu system or you can see all these icons on the screen much easier. So starting with the top left. Now, keep in mind, I am in the manual mode again. That's why it says manual up top. To the right of that, it says 3,213 shots. So that's how many images you have left on your card, uh, as well as how many minutes of record time that you have. Now, continuing to the right of that, you've got the battery indicator. Now, remember that when it drops to half, it's probably a good time to replace that battery or get it charged back up. Over to the right, you've got your histogram, which is gonna show you a representation of your exposure. Now, next to the histogram, before I do that, I'm going to hit the Q button, which gives me quick access to everything that's up on the screen so that I can change it while I'm shooting. So I hit that and I'm gonna scroll back over to the what you're gonna see on the right hand side. You're gonna see anti-flicker is currently off. We've got auto white balance, which is what is currently set. I like to shoot auto white balance. We've got the picture style is set to auto. We have the auto lighting optimizer is disabled in manual or in bulb mode. It's off because this only affects your JPEGs, but it's actually off because well, I'm in manual or in bulb. Now let me go back into there. We've got full, which is your cropping and aspect ratio. It should probably always say full. Now when you get to the AF, this is where you choose the AF method that I showed you earlier. If you want to expand it, you can go to focus with one point and the AF points above, below, and on each side. You can see right in the middle of the screen that it shows up now and it's much larger. So it gives you a larger area to choose from. Uh, below that, you've got one shot for servo, which is the same thing as hitting this button that we mapped out, the AF on button, which is right there. Below that is your drive mode. So if you wanna take one shot, just one shot when you press the button, you would be in that one. In the high speed continuous is where you go when you hold your finger down, it's gonna keep on shooting. You've got low speed continuous, self timer in case you wanna shoot photos of yourself. You have a two second self timer, and then you have a self timer with number of shots, which is actually cool. Say you wanna do a family picture and you wanna do 10 shots in a row of the family, well you could do 10 of those at a second apart. It's actually a really cool function to have for when you're doing those type of shots. Below there is metering mode, which I generally just leave right in this metering mode. Then we've got image quality, which is right now set to uh, raw plus large. So you could change that. This is not something that I personally am gonna change often because I just leave it on raw and that's where it is. And then we've got movie record size. In case you wanna quickly get to recording movies, you can still change the size right from here and hit the record button up top and it's going to start to record. One thing I should let you know is if you wanna use the IAF, you have to follow these steps. So I'm gonna hit the Q button again, the quick menu, and up here where it's set to choose the AF method, you have to go on to the L plus tracking. When you go on to that, and then you hit the mapped out buttons that we've already mapped out in the menu settings, you can see it says eye detection AF is now on. 
and then now it's off. So I'm gonna go back in and change this back to the AF point selection that I wanted, but that just shows you how you can do that. Now moving to the bottom left or closer to the bottom left of the screen, you've got like an antenna that says off. That means our Wi-Fi is off inside the camera. And below that to the right just a little bit as I'm rotating this dial, you can see this is where the shutter speed is changing. So that's your shutter speed. Next to that to the right is your aperture. And then over to the right of that, you have your light meter. And then following over to the right, you've got your ISO. Now remember, if you wanna change the ISO, you can turn this front ring. And as I turn it, it's changing the ISO, which is pretty cool. Just be careful that you don't accidentally turn that ring and mess with your ISO. You can also hit the M FN button right here, and you can rotate and change your ISO through that as well. And the touch screen works when you use it, but right now we're in the Atomos and we can't change the touch screen. And right above that, it says exposure simulation is on. That means what you see is what you're going to get. So if it's overexposed, it's going to show up as being way too bright. And if it's underexposed, it's gonna show up as being dark. And if you're gonna shoot with a flash, that is where you're gonna to wanna to make sure that exposure simulation is off. Let me jump in here real quick and say, I hope you're enjoying this video. And if you'd like to check out any of the other 3000 videos that I created, well, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below so you can check out the old videos as well as be notified when new videos go live. Go ahead and hit that bell button because that's gonna let YouTube know that you wanna be notified when I upload new content. So now let's jump back in to this video. So that was showing you what you're gonna see on the screen when you're in manual mode, but when you get into video mode, it all changes. So now I'm in video mode and you can see that the things on the screen have changed. Top left corner, it's showing manual with a camera because we are in the manual controls. But if I go ahead and hit the Q button, same thing applies as it just did with the photo modes. You can go through here and see all the different options. You use the down arrows to go down and you use the all over arrows, the right or the left, to change between the different modes and everything is popping up on the screen explaining what they are. AF points, you could change that to lock on tracking, which is very good to use when you're shooting video. Or if you're just doing an interview, you could then lock it off with something like one point AF. So you can see you can select the AF mode that you wanna choose. Now, let me get out of here by hitting the Q button real quick. Remember when we mapped out the AF on button and that one was mapped out to pause servo AF? Boom, it's now paused. I press it again, boom. We've now resumed it. So let's get back into the menu system. Scrolling down here, we've got set the recording size and frame rate. Uh, obviously you can go in and set it to 4K or 60 frames or 30 frames. Generally speaking, we're in 30 frames with this camera quite a bit. So we do that. Uh, below there is your volume. So you can see that it's me talking and that's what you're seeing, the volume right there. Right below there, you've got movie digital IS is currently off. If you do feel that you don't have image stabilization in your lenses uh, and you would like to put on movie digital IS, just keep in mind it's gonna crop through the camera just a little bit. It's gonna crop your image to, to compensate for any movement that you have and it's gonna do it digitally. It's not that bad, it, it does a pretty good job. You've got auto white balance followed by picture style. This is where if you went into monochrome, well, if you went into monochrome, yeah, all of your video is going to be fully monochrome. Below that is auto light optimizer is off as well. And we've got video snapshot, which is currently off. It says create short movies by combining several clips of a few seconds each. We are not going to do that. And there you have that. So now we get into the main part of the screen. So up top where you see the manual, to the right of that is how much record time you have left. Now check this out. I'm gonna hit the record button and you'll notice that it's counting up. Now it's gonna count up to 29 minutes and 59 seconds. And when you get to 29.59, it's gonna automatically stop and then you can restart it again. So in this case, I'm gonna hit stop. Uh, and then next to there, you have your battery life indicator followed by the right side of the screen. The histogram is currently on and you've got your focus box in the middle that I'm moving. Down on the bottom left, you can see that servo AF is on. The Wi-Fi next to that is off. You've got your shutter speed followed by your aperture followed by ISO, which is currently on auto, and that is running you through what you're gonna see when you are shooting video. So I understand that that is a long video, 
but I hope that it gives you a better understanding for where you can start with your new Canon EOS RP. Now, like I've said many times before, this is how we set the camera, Steven and I, how we set it for how we shoot photos and how we shoot video. These are recommendations. Try them out for yourself. If you don't like something, go ahead and change it and see what works best for you. And that is where I'm gonna leave it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.